Hey guys, how's it going? Mr. Mitchell here. In this video, we're going to go over two worked examples to show you how to do problems involving a mix of time dilation and length contraction. Now, if you haven't already done so, check out my previous videos covering the theory on both time dilation and length contraction, as watching these videos will help you understand what we do in this one. So let's get started. Question 1 says that a space probe travels from the Earth towards the Sun at 10% the speed of light. The total distance travelled is 2.10 times 10 to the 11 metres according to an observer on board the space probe. The probe length is measured to be 20 metres on board the probe during its flight. Part A then says to calculate the time elapsed for a clock placed on board the space probe. Well, because this time is measured on board the space probe, then it's going to be the proper time t that we want. But we don't know what the relativistic or dilated time is, so we're going to have to find time using something else. So you'll notice we're given distance according to an observer on board the space probe, and we're given the speed as well as 10% the speed of light. So that means we can do a speed distance time first of all to find out what the proper time t is. So we're trying to find t, we know that the speed v is 10% the speed of light, so that's the same as 0.1 times 3 times 10 to the 8, which equals 3 times 10 to the 7 meters per second, and the distance t is 2.1 times 10 to the 11 meters. So writing down the equation relating speed distance and time, we have d equals vt, rearranging for the time t we get distance divided by speed, and substituting in the numbers, we get 2.10 times 10 to the 11 divided by 3 times 10 to the 7. And if you put that into your calculator, you should get an answer of 7,000 seconds. Part B then says to calculate the time elapsed for a stationary observer on Earth viewing the journey. Well, because the observer on Earth is not in the frame of reference of the event, and because they're far away from the event, they're going to measure the relativistic time or dilated time t dash or t prime. So writing down, we know from the question we're trying to find t dash, we know the proper time t is 7,000 seconds from part A, and we know that the speed of light v is equal to 0.1 c, i.e. 0.1 times the speed of light, 10% the speed of light. So writing down our equation relating t dash and t for time dilation, we have t dash equals t over the square root of 1 minus v over c squared. Substituting in the numbers gives us 7,000 divided by 1 minus 0.1 c over c squared. And remember the c terms will cancel out in this bracket here, so if we put in our calculator 0.1 squared, then do 1 minus that, and then take the square root of that answer, and then do 7,000 divided by that answer, gives you 7,035 seconds in your calculator. And then part C says to calculate the length of the probe measured by a stationary observer on the Earth. So if we look back at the question, remember we were told the probe length is measured to be 20 metres on board the probe during its flight. So because that's in the frame of reference of the event, that is going to be the proper length L of 20 metres. So what we're asked for here, the length of the probe measured by a stationary observer on Earth, that is going to be the relativistic length or the contracted length L dash. So we want to find L dash. We know that L is 20 metres from the question, that's the proper length. And we know the v equals 0.1c, i.e. 10% the speed of light. So writing down our equation for length contraction, we have L dash equals L times the square root of 1 minus v over c squared. Substituting in the numbers, we get 20 times the square root of 1 minus 0.1c over c squared. And just like what we did for time dilation, because the c's cancel out, we can just do 0.1 squared, and then do 1 minus that in your calculator, and then take the square root of that answer, and then do 20 times that answer, which should then give you an answer of 19.9 .9 metres. Lastly, question 2 says that a stationary spacecraft has a length of 25 metres when measured in Earth. During a test flight, the spacecraft passes close to the Earth with a speed of 0.4 c. A physicist monitors the test flight from Earth. Part A says to calculate the length of the spacecraft as measured by the physicist on Earth. Well, notice that when the spacecraft is stationary, it has a length of 25 meters when measured in Earth, so that will be its proper length L, but the physicist will observe the spacecraft when it's moving. So we're asked for the length when it's moving, which is going to be its relativistic length or contracted length L dash. So we're trying to find L dash here. We know the proper length L is 25 meters, and we know the speed V is equal to 0.4 times the speed of light C. So writing down our equation for length contraction, we have L dash equals L times the square root of 1 minus V over C squared. Substituting in the numbers gives us 25 times the square root of 1 minus 0.4 C over C squared. And then remember the C's will cancel out on the top and bottom within the bracket. So if you put 0.4 squared into your calculator and then do 1 minus that, and then do the square root of all of that, then do 25 times that answer, you end up with 22.9 meters. Part B then says the spacecraft emits flashes of light. An astronaut in the spacecraft measures the time interval between these flashes. Is the time interval measured by the physicist on Earth smaller than, the same as, or greater than that measured by the astronaut? Justify your answer. 
Well, in this question, we just need to understand what each observer is measuring. So the astronaut is in the spacecraft, so they're going to measure a time interval, which means we're thinking about time dilation. So they're going to measure proper time t because they are in the frame of reference of the event. Whereas the physicist on Earth, they are going to measure the relativistic time or dilated time. So that means we can say the physicist on Earth will measure the relativistic time or dilated time t dash. So they will measure a time interval greater than that observed by the astronaut. So we can say greater than, and our reasoning could be that by the definition of time dilation, the physicist on Earth will measure the relativistic time, i.e. dilated time, whereas the astronaut will measure the proper time. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.